uh, you know, kept the war in Iraq going, and by the way, it's still going, uh, and it escalated the war in Afghanistan. So uh, his record, and, and, you know, there's a lot more to it, as we lay out in that statement at, at warisacrime.org, uh, is is horrendous. But if, if you look at the recent comments from our Secretary of State on, on Egypt, for example, I mean, it's hard to get worse. It's hard to get more militaristic uh, than she. That's right. But I remember when he was running for the nomination for the Democratic Party, and I remember all those debates and all the candidates up on the stage, and it seems like they were trying to one-up each other on who would bring the troops home quicker, you know? I'll bring them home in a month. I'll bring them home in a week. No, a day, you know? It was it almost got uh, comical at a point. And he was in there, too, saying he's going to bring them home. And he made a promise, right? One of the first things he's going to do? Indeed, uh, but with with some some fine print, you know. I mean, when Kucinich <laughs> and Ravel and other print. candidates were saying that, they were saying it much more as a as a blanket statement that they meant. Uh, when Barack Obama, as a candidate, was saying at rally after rally, it's the first thing I'll do. I'll bring the troops home. You can take that to the bank. He was then going and doing interviews with journalists where he was laying out his detailed plan of you know pulling out one or two brigades a month for eighteen months and and you know getting. Getting, a, getting everybody out by then, and, and yet always hedging, always say it'll be up to the generals to tell me what to do. It'll be up to the conditions on the ground, and 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 we'll pull out, you know, combat troops, and we'll have some troops that are not combat troops, and on all of that sort of hedging, which of course led to uh, his commander in Afghanistan publicly demanding that he put in forty thousand uh, more troops, which is not what he ended up getting relieved of his uh, of his office for. Uh, much more more minor uh, bit of insubordination that, that he got fired for. So uh, you, you, it was clear to many of us that Barack Obama was the furthest thing from a peace candidate. Uh, you know, and he did send 30,000 more troops in nine days before he got a Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, and yet uh, a lot of us did hold our nose and vote for him rather than McCain. I, I thought it was nice in my state of Virginia for the, for Virginia to vote for the less racist of the two candidates for the first time in the history of the country, uh, and for it to be a black man. I, I thought that you know that was encouraging, and and I didn't think that Obama would be as bad as he has been. Right? I didn't know he would announce the power to assassinate Americans, that he would so dramatically escalate the drone wars and 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 so forth. Uh, I, I thought. I thought his campaign promises was about as bad as it would get, uh, and and I've been disappointed. Sounds like the Emperor in the Star Wars movies. Well, where do we turn? Who do you trust? As we just mentioned, uh, the Clintons, uh, you know, you can't go there. Uh, can't go to Palin. You, you can't go to can't the go Republicans, because <laughs> you know the Republicans are pro-war, and all their followers are pro They think it's a glorious thing still. They think it's like the, you know, the movies they made back in the 1960s, War is Glorious. Uh, so who do you turn to? I mean, a Dennis Kucinich? He's not electable. Well, I, you know, there are hundreds and thousands of people who are qualified, and some of whom could step in and uh, and be considered uh, possibly electable by the corporate media for some time. And you know, I mean, recently departed Congress Congressman Alan Grayson or Senator Russ Feingold. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are people who've. Who've, who've been near power in Washington, who would be, uh, you know, far better than any presidents we've had in recent decades. But you know, we don't have a we don't have a candidate that we're backing with this statement. We're yeah. we're trying to build uh, awareness of the demand uh, so that uh, at least one good candidate uh, will step in. Um, but no, I don't know. Uh, who it's going to be, but I, I, I think that, as we discussed earlier, it's going to be a tough general election for Obama. And, and if the Democrats uh, want to have a better candidate, uh, you know, want somebody on the side of the vast majority of Americans, uh, you know, including many, many Republicans who, when it comes to the financial question, want the money taken out of the military and the wars, uh, they need a different candidate. You know, and now's the time to to start pushing for it. Yeah, as I said, the American people are very finicky. Uh, it's hard for their attention span is about as solid as a gnat. Well, Americans are like the weather, you know. I mean, it's like, you know, you think you know people, and you, you think you know the weather, and it's like, wait five minutes, it'll change. 
Americans are the same way. Yeah, because we got upset, and like oh. I mentioned, uh, the, the Democrats swept into power with Pelosi, all based upon ending the war. And now nobody cares about it. I mean, we talk about it every week on this program. Nobody cares. The We have do have body bags coming back. Nobody cares. Everybody's screaming about the deficit. Nobody's taking a look at the tremendous amount of money that is bleeding over there in the Middle East and is continuing to. That's never on the table, is it, David? Well, I mean, to say that the Democrats came into power to, to end the wars is, you know, it doesn't tell quite the, all of the shades of the whole story, right? I mean, clearly in the exit polls in 2006, the number one factor why people elected all those Democrats was that they wanted to end the wars. Yeah. But the leading Democrats and the majority of the of the Democrats elected had made no such promise. Uh, they had sort of hinted around about it, and, uh, and so come 2007, they immediately escalate the war that we think we've just elected them to end. Uh, the problem is that people only have two choices or what they think of as a spoiler or a, or a waste of their vote. Uh, and so they vote for the candidate they think is more likely to end the wars. Uh, but many of those candidates didn't actually promise that. Uh, and, and so the peace movement uh, collapses because now we've got Democrats in the Congress. Uh, and then two years later, another big Democratic victory, and the peace movement completely disappears. Uh, and yet uh, the Democrats are not actually about peace. Uh, their leadership uh, was never for peace uh, or, or accountability. Nancy Pelosi had, had promised not to impeach anybody, no matter what they did, six That's months right. beco before becoming the speaker-elect. Uh, so we, we've got the same problem uh, here again, as always, uh, of people two years out and with primaries to be held already holding their nose and thinking that that's their, the smart, strategic, anti-war thing to do, uh, even as we have a, a president uh, enlarging the military beyond what it's ever been. So, uh, you know, uh, Americans, uh, Americans, if you poll them, want to move the money out of the military, want to end the wars, uh, and yet if you ask them which candidate are you going to vote for or which party are you going to vote for, they often base it on crazy things like which party is more religious or 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 hates abortions more and and, and so it's it's kind of